So today, we are going to take a look at the new live-action version of Disney's Beauty and the Beast, directed by Bill Condon and starring Emma Watson and Dan Stevens. Now, normally, when I start these vlogs, I give you a quick and dirty plot summary, but do I have to? It's friggin' Beauty and the Beast. Has anybody seriously not heard this story? You know what? If you haven't, Google it, because I'm not going to tell you. I'm not. But I am going to give you my thoughts on this movie, and I think my most pressing thought is... Why? Or more specifically, why does this exist? I mean, the new live-action, well, kind of live-action version of The Jungle Book at least tried to do something new while still keeping a few familiar elements from the original, but the new Beauty and the Beast is practically the same movie. I mean, it's not shot for shot the same, but any changes in here are superficial at best. It's pretty much the same exact story. And it's not like it's bad, although there are a few elements that could have been better, and most of it comes down to Condon's directing. I can tell this movie has some downright beautiful set design, but Condon has no idea how to properly show it off. Some of the musical numbers were especially lacking. There is one song that I don't think was in the original, don't quote me on that because I haven't seen it in years, but I don't think it was, that happens right after Belle leaves the Beast castle and he sings this song while gazing out of the window in one of his castle towers. Then he walks up some stairs and sings out of another window. And then he walks up some more stairs and sings out of another window, and so on and so forth. And I'm watching this and I'm thinking, is this really as creative as you can get? Good lord. And here's the thing. Condon is the same guy who directed the Twilight Saga Breaking Dawn. Both parts. So, the thing about Twilight is, it's easy to give him the benefit of the doubt there because... There's only so much you can do with that source material. But with Beauty and the Beast, he's got no fucking excuse. Now, poor directing choices aside, I don't have any major complaints with how the rest of this movie was put together. The acting was perfectly fine. I thought Emma Watson was a pretty good Belle. Luke Evans and Josh Gad play Gaston and LeFou, respectively, and they were clearly having the time of their lives. I mean, you could tell this was a childhood dream come true for both of them, and they were loving it. Stevens was perfectly fine as the Beast. Ian McKellen, Ewan McGregor, Emma Thompson, they're always great, no exception here. I already mentioned the set design, it's fantastic. The CGI is very well done. All of the various animated furniture items in the Beast Castle look great. The music is still every bit as good as it was in 91. I still love the Gaston song, and I'm sure I'm not alone there. But as good as it all is, it's completely pointless because it in no way improves on the original. I honestly don't know why they bothered. It seems to me the only reason they made this movie was because they could. That's it. And for this reason, even though there's a lot of good stuff happening here, and I do think overall it is a good movie, I really can't recommend going out of your way to see it unless by some chance you haven't seen the original. And even then, just watch the original. And it feels really weird to sit here and tell you, don't go see a good movie. But here we are. This is probably the best movie that no one needs to see, because there's just no point. If you've seen the original, you've seen this one. And it pains me to say that, because it's clear a lot of talent and hard work went into this, but... There's just no point. I don't know what else to say. Well, that's Beauty and the Beast 2017. Till next time, take care.